Welcome to Saturday Night Scares. My name is Taylor, and I'm here to tell you of The Cremation of Sam McGee by Robert W. Service. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge that I cremated Sam McGee. Now, Sam McGee was from Tennessee, where the cotton blooms and blows, why he left his home in the south to roam around the pole God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell, though we'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold through the parka's fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd closed and our lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel to toe, he turned to me and Cap, says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess, and if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seems so low that I couldn't say no, then he says with a sort of moan, It's the cursed cold, and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through to the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. A pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And when we started on at the streak of dawn, by God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh, and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried, horror-driven, with a corpse half-hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise I'd given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate those last remains. Now a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trails had its own stern code. And the days to come, though my lips were dumb, in my heart how I cursed that load. And the long, long night, by the lone firelight, while the huskies round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows, oh God, how I loathed the thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. And on I went, though the dogs were spent and the grub was getting low. The trail was bad, and I felt half mad, but I swore I wouldn't give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing, and it hearkened with a grin. Till I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, but I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit. And I looked at my frozen chum. Then here, I say with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coals I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared such a blaze you seldom see. And I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal, and I stuffed in Sam McGee. Then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so. And the heavens scowled, and the huskies howled, and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks, and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke in an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out, and they danced about ere again I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but bravely I said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked, and it's time I looked. Then the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking cool and calm in the heart of the furnace roar. And he wore a smile you could see a mile. And he said, please close the door. It's fine in here, but I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plumtree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. 
There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold, but the Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge that I cremated Sam McGee. This next poem, written by Robert Browning, is a tale of revenge. This is The Laboratory. Now that I, tying thy glass mask tightly, may gaze through these faint smokes curling whitely, as thou pliest thy trade in this devil's smithy, which is the poison to poison her, prithee. He is with her, and they know that I know where they are, what they do. They believe my tears flow while they laugh, laugh at me, at me fled to the drear, empty church to pray God in for them. I am here. Grind away, moisten, and mash up thy paste. Pound at thy powder. I'm not in haste. Better sit thus and observe thy strange things than go where men wait me and dance at the king's. That, in the mortar, you call it a gum? Aha, the brave tree when such gold oozings come. And yonder, soft file, the exquisite blue, sure to taste sweetly, is that poison too? Had I but all of them, thee in thy treasures, what a wild crowd of invisible pleasures, to carry pure death in an earring, a casket, a signet, a fan mount, a filigree basket. Soon at the king's a mere lozenge to give, and Pauline should have just thirty minutes to live. But to light a pastille and a lease with her head and her breast and her arms and her hands should drop dead. Quick, is it finished? That color's too grim. Why not soft like the files, enticing and dim? Let it brighten her drink, let her turn it and stir, and try it and taste ere she fix and prefer. What a drop. She's not little, no minion like me. That's why she ensnared him. This will never free that soul from those masculine eyes. Say no to that pulse's magnificent come and go. For only last night, as they whispered, I brought my own eyes to bear on her, so that I thought. Could I keep them one half minute fixed, she would fall shriveled. She fell not, yet this does it all. Not that I bid you spare her the pain, let death be felt and the proof remain. Brand, burn up, bite into its grace, he's sure to remember her dying face. Is it done? Take my mask off, nay, be not morose. It kills her, and this prevents seeing it close. The delicate droplet, my whole fortune's fee. If it hurts her beside, can it ever hurt me? Now take all my jewels, gorge gold to your fill. You may kiss me, old man, on my mouth if you will. But brush this dust off me, lest horror it brings. Ere I know it, next moment I dance at the king. This next poem is by a poet who doesn't usually do horror poetry. Robert Frost's Ghost House. I dwell in a lonely house I know that vanished many a summer ago and left no trace but the cellar walls and a cellar in which the daylight falls and the purple-stemmed wild raspberries grow. O'er ruined fences, the grapevine shield, the woods come back to the mowing field. The orchard tree has grown one copse of new wood and old where the woodpecker chops, the footpath down to the well is healed. I dwell with a strangely aching heart in that vanished abode there far apart on that disused and forgotten road that has no dust bath now for the toad. Night comes, the black bats tumble and dart. The whippoorwill is coming to shout and hush and cluck and flutter about. I hear him begin far enough away, full many a times to say his say before he arrives to say it out. It's under the small dim summer star, I know not who these mute folk are, who share the unlit place with me, those stones out under the low limb tree, doubtless bear names that the mosses mar. They are tireless folk, but slow and sad, though too close keeping our lass and lad. 
and none among them that ever sings, and yet, in view of how many things, as sweet companions as might be had. Finally, this is For Annie by Edgar Allan Poe. Thank heavens, the crisis and danger is past, and the lingering illness is over at last, and a fever called living is conquered at last. Sadly, I know, I am shorn of my strength, and no muscle I move as I lie at full length. But no matter, I feel I am better at length. And I rest so composedly, now in my bed, and any beholder might fancy me dead, might start at beholding me, thinking me dead. The moaning and groaning, the sighing and sobbing, are quieted now, with that horrible throbbing at heart. Ah, the horrible, horrible throbbing. The sickness, the nausea, the pitiless pain have ceased with the fever that maddened my brain, with a fever called living that burned in my brain. And oh, of all tortures, that torture, the worst, has abated the terrible torture of thirst, for the naphthalene river of passion accursed, I have drank of a water that quenches all thirst of a water that flows with a lullaby sound from a spring but a very few feet underground, from a cavern not very far down underground. And ah, let it never be foolishly said that my room it is gloomy and narrow my bed, for a man never slept in a different bed, and to sleep you must slumber in just such a bed. My tantalized spirit here blandly reposes, forgetting or never regretting its roses, its old agitations of myrtles and roses. For now, while so quietly lying, it fancies a holier odor about it, of pansies, a rosemary order, commingled with pansies, with rue and the beautiful Puritan pansies. And so it lies happily bathing in many a dream of the truth and the beauty of Annie, drowned in a bath of the tresses of Annie. She tenderly kissed me, she fondly caressed, and then I fell gently to sleep on her breast, deeply to sleep from the heaven of her breast. When the light was extinguished, she covered me warm. She prayed to the angels to keep me from harm, to the queen of the angels to shield me from harm. And I lie so composedly, now in my bed, knowing her love that you fancy me dead. And I rest so contentedly now in my bed, with her love at my breast, that you fancy me dead, that you shudder to look at me, thinking me dead. But my heart is brighter than all of the many stars in the sky, for it sparkles with Annie, it glows with the light of the love of my Annie, with the thought of the light of the eyes of my Annie. Thank mm-hmm. you.